Hello everyone, I am Veos Human, and welcome to Solar Nations Part 6. Being that the Kerbal Space Program was heavily dependent on government contracts, and that those contracts were to put a Kerbal on the moon before any other nation, time was running out for KSP. If they didn't complete their contracts soon, the government would pool their funding. In a desperate attempt to collect as much science as possible, they turned their attention towards the Kerbal Space Center. With a modified X-8, they attempted to land at different biomes around the Kerbal Space Center with the new scientific equipment, without much success. What they desperately needed was a craft with superior control, introducing the X-9, the first hovercraft ever built. The X-9, or known by its pilots as the Flimsy Spider, was anything but superior control. The X-9 was very heavy, and with only a small little reaction wheel inside the command module, it was hard to control. Landing at your desired area was somewhat of a stroke of luck. It was obvious that it needed refinement, and refinement came in the form of the X-10. The X-10 was lighter, more agile, but it still didn't quite meet the requirements for superior control. Introducing the X-11, the very first superior controlled hovercraft. The advancement finally came through the thrust and weight ratio of the crude rocket engines. Adjusting the thrust so that at full power, it just barely got the craft off the ground. This actually enhanced its control. These advancements in technology and design would be crucial when it came time to designing the moon lander. But of course, with any experimental craft, the risks were high. Because of this tragedy, the need for safety was apparent and the X-12 was born. It got rid of the traditional landing legs and went for a more sled design with added fins for stability. It also had more parachutes and more fuel for longer durations of flight. The craft itself was a dream to fly, extremely maneuverable and very controllable. Sadly though, due to the X-12's engine technology, it quickly became known as the Miniman. That was due to the fact that it could only stay up in the air for a little over a minute before it ran out of fuel. All the science was finally collected from the Kerbal Space Center using the available science collecting technology. You have to remember that science is set to 10%, so even though it wasn't much, it was just enough. Using the new technology, plans for a moon lander were immediately in the works. However, with the increasing instability of the nations of Kerbal, the government started to become impatient and threatened to remove its funding if they didn't get a Kerbal on the moon within the year. Scientists at the Kerbal Space Center came out with a three-part plan. After testing the moon lander, making sure it worked thoroughly, they would send it into high orbit near the lunar orbit. Up there, they would test out its communication capabilities, some observational science, and then on its way back, they would test out the re-entry capabilities of the craft. The craft's re-entry capsule was a little different from your average capsule. On the return trip from the moon, the craft would accelerate dramatically as Kerbin's gravity would pull it ever faster towards it. The re-entry vehicle was calculated to slam into the atmosphere at over 3,000 meters per second. Scientists and engineers didn't quite know what to expect with those kind of high temperatures, and so they designed the capsule to be as tough as possible with redundant parachute systems just in case one or even two were to fail. During the first launch of the X-14 moon lander to test out its capabilities in high orbit, something went wrong. One of the later stages in the craft staged too early, causing the pilot to have to eject and the mission to fail. In no time at all, the staging was fixed, and the X-14 moon lander was on its way for its deep orbit trials. After a successful trial, with multiple observations and EVA reports, it was time for the ultimate test. 
would the capsule survive re-entry at over 3,000 meters per second, a re-entry speed that no Kerbinaut up until now has dared to venture. This is an ML-14, still right in Quebec. With the X-14 moon lander's deep space trial and re-entry a success, the first part of the three-part plan to the moon was completed. The moon now looked closer than ever. Thank you so much for watching Solar Nations Part 6. If you liked this video, please don't hesitate to click the like button and share it with your friends. If you wish to support the channel, a link can be found in the description below. I am Veos Human, signing off and have a good night.